वेलकाम फ्रेंड्स टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल सौम्य फिजिक्स ऑन येस्टारडेज लेक्चार आई डिसकस अबाउट रेफ्रिजारेटर ओके एंड आई हाव कलकुलेटेड द एफिसियसि अफ ए रेफ्रिजारेटर हुईच इज बीटा दिस इक्ल्स टू किऊ टू अपन किऊ वन माइनस किऊ टू है और किऊ टू इज द हिट टेकन फ्रम द सिंक एंड किऊ वन इज द हिट रिजेक्टेड टू सोर्स वेन एक्सटार्नल एनार्जी सप्लाइड फ्रम आउटसाइड एंड दैट एक्सप्रेशन कैन बी रिटेन इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेम्पारेचार ऑल्सो टी वन बै टी वन माइनस टी टू ओके सो this is the efficiency of a refrigerator now first question here that arises that what is the relation between eta and beta eta means the efficiency of a carnot engine and beta means efficiency of a refrigerator now we all know that efficiency of a carnot engine can be written as eta equals to 1 minus t2 upon t1 so from which we can write t2 upon t1 equals to 1 minus eta okay so if we divide this by t1 so what we get this 1 minus t2 upon t1 so this t2 by t1 is 1 minus eta and this is eta so this establishes the relation between beta and eta okay so this represents the relation between efficiency of a refrigerator refrigerator and that of reversible carbo engine okay reversible carnot engine so this is the first issue okay so this is the first issue the relation between eta and beta okay now let us move to few conceptual questions related to refrigerator okay few conceptual questions related to refrigerator okay few conceptual questions related to refrigerator okay the first question that we all know sometimes uh, we think sometimes uh, we all, all of you may may imagine this that refrigerator works better in winter why refrigerator works better in winter okay why this happens okay so the answer is very simple this is a conceptual question that we all know that efficiency of a refrigerator is this where t1 is the source temperature and t2 is the sink temperature now what happens in winter what happens in winter the source temperature that is the atmospheric temperature in this case decreases okay so in winter source temperature that is here the atmosphere that is atmospheric temperature t1 decreases okay so if t1 decreases then t1 minus t2 decreases so t1 minus t2 decreases and hence beta increases so the efficiency also increases this is a very simple question ye yeah. in winter the source temperature that is the atmospheric temperature decreases 
so if t1 decreases then t1 minus t2 decreases and if t1 minus t2 decreases beta increases okay so this is the one conceptual question so refrigerator works better in winter okay now our next conceptual question is that next conceptual question regarding refrigerator is why defrosting is done why defrosting is done why defrosting is done now what is defrosting defrosting means we all know that sink temper uh, sink temperature what happened due to defrosting due to frosting the same temperature decreases and due to defrosting same temperature increases or uh, sorry uh, due to defrosting due to defrosting same temperature increases okay same temperature t2 increases why because we know that when due to frosting the same temperature always decreases so due to defrosting same temperature always increases okay so if frosting means decreasing t2 then defrosting means increasing t2 okay so what is the formula of beta that is t2 by t1 minus t2 so if t2 increases then beta will also increases or you can say if t2 increases then here t1 minus t2 decreases and beta increases okay so to get proper cooling the refrigerator must be defrosted uh, within four to five days or three to four days okay so for better cooling so for better cooling defrosting is necessary because it increases the efficiency defrosting is necessary within 3 to 5 days okay or you can say 3 to 4 days no matter so the defrosting is done in order to increase the efficiency so that the refrigerator can cool properly defrosting means increase of same temperature that means the efficiency of the refrigerator increases okay so this is the second conceptual question and another conceptual question arises okay so let us move to that now the another conceptual question that arises that if t1 equals to t2 then what happens okay so we know the formula of efficiency that is q2 upon q1 minus q2 or t2 upon t1 minus t2 so if t1 equals to t2 then beta becomes infinite okay if t1 equals to t2 then beta becomes infinite and if beta is infinite this term is 0 that is q1 minus q2 equal to 0 that means w is 0 that means no external work is done on the machine so what happens so this is source this is sink this is source this is sink okay so if you don't supply any energy from outside then heat will not grow, go from cold body to hot body okay so since here the external work done on the machine is zero no heat will be supplied from lower body to hotter body according to the second law of thermodynamics okay so this would happen okay So, since no 
external work is done on the machine heat will not flow from cool to hot body okay just yes, since no external work is done on the machine heat will not flow from coal to hot body okay in accordance with in accordance with second law of thermo dynamics okay so this is all about the refrigerator refrigerator okay now one thing um, so with this uh, i tell few conceptual questions related to refrigerator and with this lecture i have completed the heat engine and refrigerator chapter now we shall move towards the second law of thermodynamics okay so i shall give a brief introduction today about the second law of thermodynamics and why it comes okay so in previous chapter that is in first law of thermodynamics when i taught first law of thermodynamics then there was no board i did that in papers so uh, if you have any problem regarding that law then you can always tell me i can again solve them no problem it's my duty so uh, the at first before knowing the second law of thermodynamics we must have to know why it comes because we know in first law that there is a conversion of heat energy into mechanical work okay but in which direction uh, the transformation takes place and how much uh, heat energy is converted to work that we don't know from first law of thermodynamics so for this reason second law is necessary okay so how much heat is converted to work and in which direction the transformation takes place that we don't know from first law okay so second law there are several statements related to second law among which two statements are famous one is clausius statement this is what is clausius statement okay first of all the clausius statement what does this statement tell it is impossible for a self acting machine unaided by an external agency to convey heat from a body of low temperature to a body of high temperature what i say it is impossible for a self acting machine unaided by an external agency to convey heat from a body of low temperature to a body of high temperature that means if you don't supply external energy from outside then heat will not move from cold to hot body this is the result okay that means heat always flows from a body of high temperature to a body of low temperature okay if you don't supply external energy from outside heat will not move from cold body to hot body okay so this is the clausius statements hmm so i have to write it this is necessary it is impossible for a 
सेल पैक्टिंग मशीन अनएडेड बाय एन एक्सटर्नल एजेंसी टू कॉन्वे हीट फ्रॉम ए बॉडी ऑफ लो टेम्परेचर टू ए बॉडी ऑफ हाई टेम्परेचर ओके दैट मीन्स हीट ऑलवेज फ्लो फ्रॉम हाई टेम्परेचर बॉडी टू ए लो टेम्परेचर बॉडी और यू कैन से इफ यू डोंट सप्लाई एक्सटर्नल एनर्जी फ्रॉम आउटसाइड हीट उल नॉट फ्लो फ्रॉम कोल्ड बॉडी टू हॉट बॉडी ओके सो दिस इज वन स्टेटमेंट नाउ द एनदार फेमास स्टेटमेंट दैट इज नोन टू ऑल इज केलविन प्लांग स्टेटमेंट ओके दैट इज केलविन प्लांग स्टेटमेंट सो वॉट इज इट what does the kelvin planck statement tell us okay so let's discuss that so what does kelvin planck statement say kelvin plank statement what does it say that it is not possible to construct a engine that can convert the entire heat to work without rejecting any heat to sink kelvin plank statement means this not possible to construct a machine that can convert the entire heat taken from the source to work okay obviously that we did in carnot engine that a part of the heat taken from the source is rejected to sink and another part is converted to work so it is not possible that the entire heat is converted to work it must reject some heat to sink okay so or you can say in more general way it is not possible it is not possible to construct an heat engine whose efficiency is 100% obviously not possible it is not possible to construct a machine or heat engine that has 100% efficiency okay 100% efficiency means what 100% efficiency means the entire heat taken from the eta equals to w upon q1 so eta is 1 means these two must be equal so there is no heat rejection to the sink this is not possible okay so these are the two statements regarding the second law of thermodynamics now in our next class we will discuss about few other topics related to second law of thermodynamics okay and in our next class we will show that these two statements that is clausius and kelvin planck statement their meaning is same that means they are equivalent that we discuss in our next lecture so dear guys if you don't subscribe my channel then kindly subscribe it to get the latest updated videos on higher secondary and bsc physics okay thank you